Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about these trick flow double hump heads. You're like, wait, I think I've seen a video on this already. No, this one's really comparing CNC ported to as cast. So about a year ago or so, I did a video on these. So you'd have to go back quite a ways on the as cast ones. And I showed the flow numbers and stuff to prevent you from having to go back and find that video from way back when. I might reflowed another one and I have that in this video too. So I can show you the CNC ported ones versions of these and the ASCAST versions. I'll also go through some of the differences between them besides just the flow numbers. So let's kind of get started. This is a set of 492 double hump heads. So these are your, your OG ones. These are a really good set, obviously. And these eventually will make it to my 383 small block Chevy Dino Mule. Time is really kicking my rear right now. Uh, also, money, it doesn't hurt either. But these are how they looked from the factory, sort of. They've been cut and had a valve job done, and I did some blending. Right now, they flow about 221 CFM. They flow like 206 stock. I could probably push this and get them around. Actually, I think it's closer to 231. Sorry, 231. So it's not bad. It's just, it is what it is. Very old set of heads. But they look like this. This is your pattern that you have. Now, 492s, not all double humps are this way, which I'll kind of get to. You see the two double humps, but these have the accessory bolt holes. Not all did. So if you had a set of 461s, they would have a much more pronounced double hump, but they wouldn't have these marks. Now, Trip Flow said, you know what would be cool? I know there's a lot of, let's face it, most hot riders are more of the mature age, I'd say. And they're used to seeing this stuff. So Trip Flow said, you know, I bet you it'd be really nice if these guys that are, you know, more elderly would, could switch these heads and no one would ever know except for the performance would be so much better. So these small block guys that run around with this, instead of dropping an LS to try to make some more power, they could just put on those heads, paint them orange, and no one would really know that they've got some pretty good power behind it. Pretty good idea. So they came up with these. These are the 175. So this is their ASCAST version. And immediately you're like, no, it's not. Look, it's got CNC chambers. We'll get to that. But if you notice, the big thing you have with it when you compare the two is they've got the same pattern for the double humps and... You guessed it, got accessory bolt holes. Triple does make this, by the way, the ones that look like the 461s that have no bolt holes. So if you want to switch, they've got that too. These are probably the more popular because they work with more accessories. Now, these come with a 60cc chamber. For the record, I did CC this one, these 492s, and they were 66.2. So these, in fact, are actually smaller. Now, there are some double humps like 461s that have about a 60cc chamber. So they're about this size. Now, when I initially did the video, I showed you all the stuff with it, but I'll kind of recap real quickly. These have a 202 intake valve, a 1600 exhaust valve. They do have a CNC chamber and a CNC bowl blend, but as you could tell, they are as cast. This is how they come. Now, when I first initially saw this, I was like, what is up with this vein? This is the goofiest looking thing I've ever seen. You've got a big old knot. I'm going to lay it back so you can kind of see better. But usually there's a little spike point here, and I'm like, why is this? Why do you have a lump? Why do you have a lump there? It makes no sense. And I was like, that's it just looks weird, right? And I was like, ah, um, didn't make any sense to me at all at the time. And then this showed up. This is, I ordered a, this for a customer. This is the CNC ported. Now, if you look at it, this is your ASCAST 175cc intake runner. Here's your 200cc runner version. They look the same on the outside, just like your double hump. So no one would ever know you're about to put it on them. But this one, since it's ported fully. So it's done a little bit of a changes to make it different. And they're kind of noticeable. And the major one, and this explains that lump, look at the vein. So this is the, the ASCAST. So you got all that material so you can make that vein. Now you're looking at it and you might be like, oh my gosh, they're doing what AFR does. It's got the vein in the weird way. No, this is similar-ish to AFR, but not quite. If you look at the direction of its um, vein, so if this, the seat was a, um, let me lay this head back, be easier. If this whole seat was a um, clock, you would say this is about eight o'clock where their vein is. That is not where AFR is. AFR has their vein actually this direction. It's more about four or five o'clock, right in this range on this side. Trip flow, to my knowledge, the only one that puts it on this side. 
Now, my thing with veins are they're more of an air manipulation device. If I had my choice, it'd be straight right here because that's where the air wants to go. Usually when you have them here or here, what you're doing is you're manipulating the air. You're trying to slow it down at some point so you can get it to go to the other point. So like AFR puts it here so you make the air go here or vice versa like what they're done here. Trick Flow, like I said, is the only one that ever seen it put it there. Now, I did at once at one point ask Trick Flow directly because I have a somewhat of a relationship with them. And I should point out, Trick Flow is not paying me to say any of this stuff. They did not provide these heads. What happened is a customer, two different customers, ordered both these, and that's why they're here. So, anyway, I did once ask Trick Flow why they had it that way. They said it's from Dino testing that they had done. They do have an in-house Dino. I didn't ask them to share the results because I don't think that they would. They could have had it facing for it. There's enough material to do it. If I was a port set that's what I'd do, as I'd have this facing exactly about here. Boop. And that's how I'd have it. See how that rear is? That's where this should be. That's how I'd have it. But maybe they tried it, and this made more power. Don't know. But beyond the vein, here's some of the differences. This is a 2055 intake valve versus your ASCAS 202. The intake runner obviously gained in size because it's ported, it's 200 versus the 175. Exhaust valve stayed the same at 1.6. One, one, uh, 1. The chamber itself grew because when you put a bigger valve in it, you have to kind of unshroud it. So these are 64 cc's versus the 60. You probably could mill off, by the way, to get into a lower one, kinda. Because the bigger the valve, the closer to the deck, which the camera will not, there we go. See how much aluminum right before the seat ring is? You got, a, you got a little bit, but the bigger the valve, the more that valve gets closer to the deck. So you can mill off less before you get into the valve job. There's still enough, like for me, there's still enough to take off probably 20 before you got into the steel ring. And not that it's the end of the world if you do, but still, I prefer not to. It makes the deck look cleaner. Anyway. There's that. They both have about the same entry here. Looks pretty, doesn't it? Compared to, yeah. The big difference, by the way, on these ASCAST ones versus the aftermarket, the aftermarket versions versus the stock ones, there's actually water between here on the stock castings. Aftermarket, it's solid. So that's why you make the bowl bigger, especially there and it really helps out things. Exhaust side, let me show you this. There's your as cast. And by the way, I'm gonna try. The big benefit for the uh, aftermarket ones, they're made of aluminum. So this is your stock appearing one. Not that different, it's not that different. Okay, there's some, there's some noticeable things. You still have this little step, so that's pretty close. And then there's obviously more material around here because of the aluminum versus cast iron. Also. I, if you're um, one of the more mature audiences, I have seen several times where these head bolt bosses here have broken. Like I've seen them actually crumble. Like there's just not, and I'm on the stock casting, I'm dead serious. I mean, our first set actually had um, JB weld across some of them. And that was like, well, it held. Not ideal at all. So I have seen, even though they're cast iron, you think it's thicker, they're, I've seen them crack and break. So more material here, probably the better thing. But that's a small thing to look at. But looks really, really close from that side. And there's your exhaust port view. Let me flip the, this one over. If my hands will grab it. There's a CNC one. So you get a little bit of difference. But all that's talking. I'm sure you want to see the flow numbers. And I'm not going to show you these. Like I said, they're 231. You can go back and watch the video on this. And yeah, I'll be dynoing with this one eventually. And... Who knows, maybe these at some point later on if I can get a set for myself or something. But money and time, two things at this point I have zero of. But um, anyway, let me show you the flow sheets and uh, let you see those. Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video has to do with these uh, double hump heads from Trick Flow. Now these aren't new, they've been out for a couple years. But now I have the flow difference between the ASCAST and the Porter ones. I'll get to go through some of the differences and stuff. A long time ago, probably more than a year, I did a video just about the ASCAS ones. I hadn't seen the CNC ones before. So in this video, I've got both in there. So I've got the head, the ASCAS ones and the CNC Porter ones in here. This way, you ain't got to go back through a year's worth of videos and try to find it. But I'll have all the information, kind of give you a rundown. These are a super popular head and they've got a lot of potential. So 
after seeing the CNC head, now I understand why they did some of the stuff they did with the as cast head. So let's kind of get started. Um, these are a set of 492 double hump heads. These eventually will make it on my 383 Dynamo whenever I find time and money. Um, but these are what a traditional, you know, double hump head is. Now these are the pretty good ones. These are actually the angle plug ones. So they're, they're, they're nice, uh, very nice, really hard to get. And if you look on the outside, they have the accessory bolt holes, which you can see this particular set does. Not all double humps do, but 492s and a few others do as well. I think the 186s. But if you notice, they got the, the accessory bolt pattern, and also you could tell the double humps. Now, what's unique about this is Trick Flow said, you know, these are super popular, and I bet you we can trick a lot of the LS guys. If we make an aftermarket uh, double hump appearing looking head that makes way more power, and it could shock a lot of people, and it'd be a direct replacement bolt on for the old hot rodders. Um, and just pick up the power so this way they can run with the LS's and don't feel like they have to switch things. Well, and what they came out with was this one. If you look, this is the ASCAST one. So this, if you notice the pattern, so we just go back and forth, they look very, very similar. Obviously it's aluminum, but if you painted it orange or whatever else, uh, besides a magnet test, they're gonna look pretty close, especially on this, and they've got the accessory bolt patterns. Now, if you're some of the ones that have like the regular double humps that don't have the accessory bolt pattern, uh, Trick Flow makes that as well. Now, by the way, Trick Flow is not paying me to do any of this. By chance, I had a customer order a set of the CNC Porter ones, and I have a different customer order a set of the ASCAST. Would you like, that's not ASCAST, got a chamber. You're right, so we'll get time to more to it. This is the ASCAST version. This is what the last video did. If you look at it, these actually have a 60cc chamber. They may have a larger chamber version, um, but these are 60cc's. And yeah, they're full CNC chambers. They've got a straight plug, not angle, and they've got a little CNC bulb blend, nice valve job, the transition in the chamber's great. But if you notice, and I talked about this the last time, see that weird vein that they have? And I was like, what the hell are you doing? Why do you have such a weird vein? It should be a, I'm gonna do it better, lay it down. It should be a nice point coming here instead of what's this weird bump you put in there. I was like, what? that makes no sense, right? Until I saw this one. This one is their other upgrade. So this is the, looks just like it, just like this one. This, this one though is their 200cc full CNC ported head. And I'm gonna show you the flow differences as well. But if you look, that's why. This has the vein, and now it's in a different position. This is not what you think. So a lot of people are gonna look at it and you're like, oh, that's what AFR did. Actually, no. Let's look at where the vein's pointing. If this was a clock, six o'clock would be here. This is about eight, almost nine. So the vein's at eight o'clock. If you were to pick up an AFR head, and maybe I'll put it in this video so you can kind of see the difference. Their vein is over here. So theirs actually is this direction, not on this side. Triplo, to my knowledge, the only one that actually puts the vein in that direction. Me, I prefer, by the way, straight. That's where the air is going. Usually when you have them on this side or this side, it's an air manipulation device. You're trying to slow the air so it goes the other way. Something like that. That's typically why it's done. But like I said, AFR is usually in the about four to five o'clock position. Trick flow is different. That's why they have all that material there on their as cast version. So when they port it, they could do that. See it better? It's got a more of a step there. Anyway. All the flow numbers I'm about to show you come from my... Uh, Signs Digital 680 Bench, um, use it for everything. 430 bore, no exhaust pipe. And this is the entry that was used on both. So this first column is the CNC ported ones. And if you notice, so I care more, I'm the big thing about 400. At the 400 valve lift tells you how really how good this head is. So the 200 flows 241. For a 200 cc port, that's not bad. It's really, really good. And then I like 600, 273, even though you're like, you're not gonna run a 600. These are hydraulic roller capable, and you should be able to run a 600, um, or close to it, like 585. So that's a pretty important number. And if you look at 600, it goes 274. It peaks, by the way, at 800. Don't think you'll do that unless you're doing a solid roller and a lot of rocker ratio. Probably not gonna happen, but it also tells you how stable the port is. So if it keeps flowing, that's what you wanna see. It's a good sign of stability. But regardless, that's, that's still moving quite a bit of air for the 200cc range. So it's really, really good. Very, very good. Um, exhaust side, 
400, it flows 171, and it peaks at 210. This is all without an exhaust pipe. And that's not bad, not bad at all. What I don't know the answer to this, and I think it's, these are in the same stock height as the exhaust ports of a double hump. For the record, most, most aftermarket small block Chevy heads are actually raised up a little bit. They don't advertise it because you're just so used to seeing it that way. But the stock location is actually a little bit lower, and that does somewhat hurt flow. Now, this is the as cast one. So this one's quite a bit smaller, smaller valve. How does it do a difference? Well, now we can compare. So this whole column here is the as cast one. So at 400, it does 231, so it's 9 CFM less. But if you look at the lower CFMs, it's worse too. But the big difference comes at 600. You went from flowing 274 for the CNC Porter one to 255. So almost 20 CFM difference. That's a huge, huge difference. So there's definitely some power to be gained there. Exhaust side's about the same. At 400, we went from 171 to 160. It's about 10 CFM. It's a pretty big difference. The peak flow, 210 to 188, that's, that's noticeable. So the exhaust side has definitely picked up from the porting. So if you're ever curious at how much it gains from porting, um, at least on this particular set of heads, it's pretty noticeable. But it also gains some size too. I really do wish I had like the greatest relationship and I could just do all the R&D and testing for different companies and give them independent results. Because what I would love to do is have a set of each one of these and then on the 383 dyno mill that I have, test both. Because they're both trick pro products. But this way you could see the difference in power between the ASCAST and the CNC ported ones. But I would say this, and this is me speculating, truly speculating, and I hate to almost do it because um, I rely on the dyno test because I hate when people speculate because they just usually they're parroting something that they heard on the internet and they haven't really ever tested. But if I was to actually put this on that 383, what I think would happen is the numbers would be pretty close. And I hate to say it, but I bet they would be. And you're like, why? This has the CNC ported one. It's the 64cc chamber. This has a 60cc chamber. So right away, you've got a four tenths gain in compression from these. So that's gonna be worth some power. How much, I don't know, at least 10, I would think. Now it flows worse, but that compression difference is gonna help gain more than what this flow difference and smaller volume would be. However, I still think these are gonna run up top better. So you get to 6,500, these are gonna walk away from this, from the size and the flow itself. But I would love to test it, but I'm, like I said, I have great relationship with cylinder head companies, but the opportunity to test multiple sets of their own heads to see how they do, it's just, that's more of a pipe dream. Also, it'd be a time thing anyway, because I still have customers, obviously, both of these are customers' heads, so um, still have to get stuff done. This one, by the way, what he asked me is, hey, can you just port the exhaust ports? I was like, yeah, I can do that. It's not a problem. So he just wants me to port the exhaust ports, and I'm going to redo it. I'm thinking I could beat their numbers, but we'll see. Hopefully in a, within a month, I would imagine I could be done with this and we'll see what happens. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman. I did race Superboy. I don't port cast iron heads. You guys take care.